Hello everybody, I believe... Hello, there we go. I believe we are now live. So today is going to be a really quick video. I just wanted to hop on live because a couple of weeks ago I started to notice that we're getting a few familiar questions um, and I wanted to basically spend a little bit of time going through any questions that you may have. Um, just for a quick introduction, I am Bethan, the director of Red Digital and Events. Um, I've been working in marketing for a good few years now um, and recently set up my own company. Um, so the purpose of today basically is for you to be able to pick my brain on anything that you are wondering. Um, but I do have a couple of questions that I've collated from the last week or so that have been submitted beforehand. So I'm going to be answering those as well. Um, now, I'm going to be online for up to the next 30 minutes, but no more than that. So I'll get through as many of these pre-sensing questions as I can. And then if anybody else has any further questions, we'll sort of jump in to some live questions as well. Um, so right now I'm live on Facebook and Instagram. So if you see me looking in a different direction, it's because I'm checking out the other platform. Um, but first off, we're going to start off with a question that was submitted through Instagram from Influence Rocket. And they asked um, and said that greatness equates to service and finding a way to serve many. So who would we say are the people that we hope to serve? And this is a very good question and not one I was kind of expecting. Um, so at Red Digital, our whole mission is to serve and help small business owners and SMEs. So I tend to say that the people that we will serve would be anyone that's got up to 25 employees. Um, so the smaller scale of the SME bracket and businesses within the local area is always a plus. So in Wales or kind of surrounding, um, but we do serve UK wide. So any business that needs some help with their marketing is in scope we can help you out um, and yeah we do serve a very wide range of people we don't narrow ourselves down to any particular industry we are pretty open that we will work with anybody of any ilk um, but obviously it's just making sure that it is a good fit for us okay so the next question is much more the kind of nitty-gritty marketing question and that is how do you create more engagement? And that's a really good one. And it's a question that I think I myself even ask. Um, engagement is the absolute bane of my life. It's the most difficult thing to get on social media. Um, so the ways in which you can do it are very varied. Ultimately, the first thing that I say that you need to do is make sure that you're available. Um, especially within the first hour of posting something, make sure that you are online and you are responding to all the comments that you get and that you're actively joining in a conversation. But <laughs> that doesn't always work because you can be online for the first hour, but if you don't get any comments, then what are you supposed to do? Um, so another really good tactic is to get a few people that either work with you as the team or Hello, <laughs> sorry, I got a few waves coming in. Um, all the people who are close to you, so friends and family that you trust to kind of hop on and be your kickstarters as I call them. So ultimately these are people that you might have to bribe with a cup of coffee or a, maybe a glass of wine here and there. And they will be making comments on your posts on your behalf. Um, and this can really help with engagement because no one wants to be the first one to comment on anything. It's always a little bit frightening. It's always a little bit um, worrisome that like, what if your comment is just completely ignored or what if the people who are running the page never get comments? Um, so yeah, no one wants to be that first person. And if you can break that barrier by supplying the first commenters, it makes things a little bit easier. Okay. On to the next question, and this is a bit of a longer one. So what type of marketing is most important, do you think? I can't decide whether I should do email or social media. Okay, this is a good question, 
But ultimately, I would say both. Um, you're not really going to get far with just email marketing, in my opinion, because you're going to really struggle to build any kind of mailing list. Um, but email marketing is a really wonderful tool, as long as you're doing it in partnership with some other options. So, for example, on social media, you could share your opt-ins, you could share access to sign up to your email marketing system. But if you just had email marketing alone, it's going to be much more difficult for people to stumble upon that unless they just so happen to be at the right place in the right page on your website. And social media marketing is free. So I would recommend that everybody does it at least to a certain extent because at least you're then there and available to the platform. Um, if you aren't there at all, then you could be missing out on a whole new audience. Okay, so next question is, how can you raise your profile on social media? I'm assuming that this question is a little bit more about how can you raise your like followers and the performance on social media? And in answer to that, I think the biggest thing I would say is to be consistent, to regularly be posting on a particular platform and to be um, kind of showing up and being forthcoming with your marketing in, a, in the platform itself. If you are kind of going off of habit and doing what you've always done, you're unlikely to see things take off. So maybe factor in some video marketing, especially if you've never done it before. Um, things like this, lives, and some other elements like tying in some email marketing and things like that. And the more content you can provide and the more varying content you can provide, I'd say that's when you'll really start to see things grow. Okay, next question then. Should your profile be serious or laid back? This is a good question um, and definitely depends on the brand. This isn't a blanket statement for everybody. The first thing that you need to do to answer this question is actually outline who your audience would be. So for myself um, and for Red Digital, our brand, our audience is reaching out to other business owners. So it wouldn't really be suitable if I was posting very casual, informal content. However, if you look at some of the brands that are clothing brands, clothing companies that are reaching out to a certain age demographic, you'll find that a lot of their content are like memes and fun, light-hearted hearted videos. And that is a system that would work best for them. If they were to be writing formal content, it just wouldn't fit. So it's definitely a case-by-case -case answer on this. So identify who your audience is and try and figure out what they'll be looking for I guess is the best way to do that okay and now next question is I've been using social media for marketing but haven't had any results where am I going wrong the first thing I think is you could be keeping in mind the wrong results so a lot of people when they look into social media marketing they want a thousand followers or they want 2000 followers or maybe even more. Um, but realistically, that is not going to get you any business results. I would personally say that rather than aiming for vanity metrics like that, try and look to create um, some more attainable goals that are in line with your business. So maybe try and get more leads from social media or Maybe just try and get more engagement from your ideal customer. That makes it a little bit easier to reach the goals that you're looking for. And it also means that the goals are more likely to get you better income results and get you to be generating income. Okay, this is a good one. This next question is good. Um, thinking of starting a company from scratch, any ideas how to establish through social media to market myself and my product? Um, this is a really interesting time, actually. So with the state of play of the world right now, I do think that a lot of people have been put back on a like, level playing field. That if you're performing really wonderfully beforehand, you may have had a bit of a 
gap in your social media marketing where your team has been furloughed. Um, you may find that some of your competitors have not been so active on social media. Um, or you may notice that the algorithm is performing a little bit differently than it was previously. Um, so now is a really good time to be starting up a new page. So first off, get everything set up ASAP. And then to kind of establish yourself through social media to market yourself and your product, firstly, tell your story. Um, a lot of people go on social media and fall into the habit of promoting their content an awful lot or promoting their business and asking people to purchase. Um, but the best way to do well is to really show people the story behind your business and the people behind your business. So what I would recommend is first, sharing a picture of yourself introducing yourself and how you got into starting up this new company that you're you're in the progress of starting up um and then from there continue to tell your story and not just promote your products of course show the products that you're selling and what you have available but it's a fine line of um what we're doing is marketing not sales so you don't want anything to be too um, in your face. You don't just want to constantly be asking people to buy from you. So that would be my biggest tip if you're starting from scratch right now. Just keep in mind that by being yourself and telling your story, you're likely to do better. Um, and to answer a question that I've just received through Instagram, Rachel's asked, do mailing lists work? Uh, yes, but only if you use them properly, in my opinion. So mailing lists quite often people just think of mailchimp and sending out newsletters or sending out updates on what's going on in the company and um, maybe even just announcing new products now i don't think that's ideal personally um i think the best way that you could utilize a mailing list is by building out a funnel and i've actually recently made a youtube video on this topic so i'll see if i can share the link in the comments for you um but the co concept of this is building out a sort of start to finish with people who may be interested in your products. So you introduce what you do, um, you give them some value, and then as they go through your, your funnel, they're slowly but surely introduced to some products they may be able to purchase. And at first, these are definitely low ticket, um, low commitment products that, or services that don't cost an awful lot of money. But as they then get to know more about you and, and get more value from you in this funnel, um, you can increase the level of the item that you're selling. So in my opinion, I think everybody should have a mailing list, especially when you think about platforms like TikTok, where people have grown millions and millions of followers and a huge fan base, um, only to then all of a sudden be threatened that the platform may be deleted. Um, and lots of these people, these influencers, are at a point where they've got all these millions of followers, but no way to convert them or no way to transfer them onto a different platform. So it is important to remember that if you're using social media marketing, you are not owning any of the people that follow you. So your performance is down to the platform. If Facebook for some reason decided that you were breaching their terms, they could just delete your profile and there's nothing you can do about it. So I definitely think if you're doing social media marketing, you should try everything you can to convert those followers into um, subscribers on your mailing list as well. Okay, please remember, feel free to send your questions in. I'm answering some of the pre-answered questions but I, I do have time to answer some questions if you have them um so another question is when advertising a new business would it be best to focus on one platform like instagram or use multiple good question um following the same kind of logic as the last answer because of the nature of social media platforms and the fact that they're not owned by any of us and um, we're just guests on the platform i would recommend you using a couple um, my usual advice is to pick three that make the most sense to your business so knowing 
the person who sent this comment, I would say if you're talking about photography, then you want some visual platforms. So I would say Instagram and Facebook because they are both so easily connected and you border like a very good target market for those two platforms for yourself. Um, and then finally Pinterest, which is often overlooked as a social media platform, but it's a kind of mixture between social media and search engine and it would be a really good option for photos because it's so visual. Um, so yeah, ultimately you can duplicate content between the two platforms as well so that you're not just constantly trying to drum up new content and feel like you're on this this content treadmill where you're making stuff for the sake of making it. Um, instead, you could maybe stagger what you're posting so that um, your schedules almost run backwards. So you're not posting the same thing at the same time on the two different platforms, but they are the same content pieces. Um, and you could also repurpose content from one site into the other and, and vice versa. Um, so I would recommend using more than one platform wherever possible. Okay, and we've got one final presenting question, which is how to create images like yours, please? Struggling to make professional looking pictures. So firstly, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm glad to hear that you think our images that we send out look professional. Um, I use a program called Canva. I'm absolutely no way, shape or form a graphic designer. Um, so I tend to see a clear of anything too complicated. I, I use Canva myself and the most important thing to make sure your images always stay professional is to make sure that you stick with a really solid colour scheme and consistent typography. So um, I myself have two fonts that I use, one that's like a heading font that's handwritten and one that's a typed font. Um, but whatever would fit for your brand, quite a lot of people will pick one text that is the same text as their logo and then one other kind of subheading text. Um, but colour scheme is a big thing. If you have the right colour scheme, some key colours that you can pull from your logo or decide up front that you only ever use those three to four colours, um, it can really help to make things look polished and professional because it's consistent and consistency always helps with professionalism. Okay, so I think that is everything. That went on for a lot longer than I was expecting. I thought I was only gonna be here for about 10 minutes or so. Um, I do have a little bit more time earmarked, so I guess I'll give you all a second or two in case you wanna put any last minute questions into the chats. I'm looking at them both at the same time. Um, it doesn't look like I've got any more, so I guess we'll sign off here and just say thank you for joining today's video. I hope that some of these questions gave you a little bit of insight into marketing, into social media and how you can maybe put some of this into practice in your own business. Um, as always, feel free to get in touch. I have my website linked all throughout Facebook. And you can actually book in time with me directly to go through a quick free strategy call. Um, no obligation or anything like that and, and no cost, but it means that you get the opportunity to pick my brain, maybe bounce some ideas off of me that you're considering trying out for your business. And I can tell you whether I think it's a good idea or not, maybe, and we can come up with some plan of action for you. Okay, so thank you all for joining me and maybe I'll catch you soon. I'm hoping to do, oh, wait, I've had one more question come through. Um, so why is social media so important? Whew. It depends on who you ask. Some people don't think social media is an important option for marketing. They think it's just kind of part of the thing that you have to do at this point, but not that it's important on its own. I, however, disagree. I do think social media is a really important option to delve into for your marketing. One, because it's so accessible. Social media really gives everybody the opportunity to do well. 
um, especially when you're just discussing organic social media content and not paid for ads. Um, but it's also a really great tool for businesses to be able to allow their potential customers to see who they are. When you create a website or a brochure, a lot of what you're doing is just focusing around promotion and is focusing around selling or giving information about the company. On social media, you can be much more relaxed and show more about who you are behind the brand so that people get the opportunity to know you and to trust you. Um, and for anyone who's in the call that in the call, in the chat that can see this and has any kind of marketing experience, you'll know that no like trust are the three key features to get somebody to go from a follower, a, a viewer to a customer. So social media really gives you the key to be able to let people know you and let them like you. And then that promotional material that I talked about that you have on your website that gives them all the value that you can offer really does um, give them the trust then. So they work hand in hand and it's definitely important. Okay, so I'm now gonna call it there. I won't do another sign off, um, but thank you all for joining and I will catch you again.